Naman, Agus Mafar, a ta exifu, at our hon, at on talov, onus gum I, onus gum will, uh, Kursi Aknamiakta Gumma. I, I welcome the opportunity to speak on this, and I welcome the written speech from the Minister. I look forward to hearing what the Junior Minister has to say in relation to actions to be taken. Um, the figures have been referred to here today, and it's been said that we can't put a value on the work. But in fact, I th understand that work is in progress by the Central Statistic Office and by the uh, organisation on the ground in relation to the valuation. And a figure of 20 billion has been mentioned repeatedly. Where that, what that figure is, it's, a, it's, it's amazing that we don't have it. It's amazing that no government department has seen fit to put a monetary value. We put a monetary value on lots of stuff, but not on this. So what is the figure? What are carers saving? Minister, what are carers saving this country? Is it 20 billion? Is it 18 billion? Is it 22 billion? The figure is astronomical. And yet we don't have a figure here in this speech in relation to what has been saved. And we talk about a thriving economy outside of COVID, but we never actually value the work that goes into making that economy thrive. And it's on the basis primarily of unpaid work, actually, a huge segment of that, and certainly carers. So when I look at this today, I, I, I welcome what Sinn Féin has done and the amendment indeed tabled by a number of speakers, including my own colleague. And I'd just like to go on, on two things. I'm going to come back to the prime time because that's part of the uh, motion here today. I, there is no respite in Galway, Minister. Is that correct? You might answer that. There is no respite at the moment for over a year for people, for carers in relation to their loved ones. And I can think of many examples throughout Galway. I'm sure you can in East Galway. And here I am a year later asking for the same thing. Now, it's beyond my comprehension to understand how NEFID and the other subcommittees haven't prioritised um, respite care. That should be the first thing. We can't let people struggle on, saving us money and not giving them care and watching them go under. We don't need organisations to tell us that. We can see it with our own eyes. We know it and you know it. So why hasn't it been top of the list for, for NEFID and for NIAC? Why hasn't it been top of the list to say, this has to be dealt with and how do we deal with it? How do we make respite services safe so that we can give respite? Now, I'd love an answer from you today. And if not today, by, by in writing. Let me deal with the second one part of the motion, the other part in relation to deploring um, the abhorrent practices, that's the sentence used here by Sinn Féin, uncovered by RTE. I have to say, I, I welcome that they've put that in, and twice they've put it into the motion, because I don't know, Minister, if you're shocked. I thought I was beyond shock. But to hear, it's bad enough that this practice, this abhorrent practice of building up dossiers, taking up civil servants' time to build up dossiers on cases that were apparently dormant, with the view to doing the family in, I changed that language, with the view to catching the families when they were at the most vulnerable and hopefully having a lower settlement and saving the state costs. And all the time that this energy was going in, the energy wasn't going in to provide services or indeed to do analysis of the cost that carers save us. Now, I want to say publicly thank you to the whistleblower. I, I, without that whistleblower, without his courage to come forward, and I'm sure his life isn't easy. And you're nodding, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate you're a proactive minister. But can you imagine we had to rely on him, and he's been threatened with the Official Secrecy Act, as was RT, as I understand it. And do you know what abhorred me and annoyed me the most? was the reaction, the reaction from comment commentators, the former Attorney General, who didn't seem to see too much wrong with that it was normal practice to exchange reports. The comment from the head of the psychiatrist in Ireland floored me. I, I really couldn't understand what he was saying. It's worth re-listening to him last Sunday. And for me, who had a limited, uh, limited experience, but some experience nevertheless, of course medical reports are exchanged, but they're done in an open and accountable way, and there are rules guiding that. 
There are rules guiding, and both sides know the rules of the game. And on occasions, it's a game. It's never a game when you're dealing with a child with disability. I'm talking about a game in the terms of, uh, of the law. And there are rules. There were no rules here. There was a collection of documents and information on a secret basis to build up a dossier to be in, have the advantage if ever the family you, came Deputy. to settle the case. Finally, there is no need for dormant cases. Both sides can bring them to a conclusion. So the comments from the former Attorney General were also a bit disingenuous you, in Deputy. relation to that matter. Now, on behalf of government, I call on Minister of State Anne Rabbit. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and I want to thank all the deputies for contributing to this, after, this morning in the House. I, I'm going to address two issues which are in, in the motion here this morning. One is to do with day services, one is to do with respites. And I will speak then also to do also with um, the primetime programme. And I will answer some questions there um, to um, Sen Deputy um, Connolly. So I have spoken with numerous carers um, while a member of this House, and more recently as Minister, for disabilities. Many carers have told me about the struggles they face looking after the most vulnerable. The pandemic has worsened the situation for many and I would like to take this opportunity to thank them sincerely and to also restate this government's commitment to supporting people with disability and their families and carers at this time. And I want to use this time this morning to address points raised on respite and day services. I am very aware of the delay in some local health areas for a respite service. I am very aware of it. And the stress that this causes on people with disabilities and their families. The HSE regards the provision of disability services as essential to maintaining a response to people with disabilities. And that is some change that I have brought about since last September. In the first wave of COVID, um, disability services was not deemed an essential service. It is now deemed an essential service for adults. Because of COVID-19 at present, centre-based respite facilities are generally providing services at 40 to 60% occupancy level due to the necessary pre precautions to maintain physical distancing and to adhere to infection prevention and control. The majority of centres are open on a reduced capacity basis due to the physical distancing requirements. In a very small number of cases, certain centres still remain closed or continue to be used as isolation purposes, subject to the prevailing local indices of infection, but the HSE continue to work with the service providers locally to maximise both centre-based and alternative non-residential respite and support option to provide target supports wherever possible. And the use of targeted one-to-one -one home support hours are being offered in lieu of respite in certain circumstances, subject to appropriate risk assessments and in line with the prevailing infection and prevention control guidelines. And in 2021, the HSE will provide 214 intensive respite support packages to children and young adults. Of course, we would hope to avoid the COVID rates of course, we hope that all COVID rates fall, services will be able to improve. In Budget 21, I committed to providing funding to the HSE to develop nine additional respite services across the country. That nine is one for every single CHO in, 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 in the state. That is the whole purpose of it, that where we don't have proper respite services, that at minimum we will have one functioning respite house in every single CHO. And that is predominantly with a focus for children's respite, but where we have adult um, need there as well. The HSE are engaging as a matter of priority with service providers to develop these services in each CHO and hope to be in a position to confirm the locations and other facilities in the coming months. And only three weeks ago, um, St Gabriel's in Limerick was the first of these that funding w was allocated to and is being commissioned and recruited for as we speak. On the day service issues, the House is aware this time last year, day services had to close due to the unprecedented threat of COVID. And from August, as I say, we have got it deemed essential. And there, when we returned, or the resumption of services started in August, we came from a very low base of where by September it was 31% and uh, quantum services just before I came in here is at 55% at this moment in, in time. And the additional investment in disability services secured under the COVID Action Plan and Budget 2021 would build the capacity of our adult ad, adult disability service and is increasing day services by one day a week. And it will also support around 1,700 young people who leave school and training programmes in, in 2021. 
I am committed to, I, I want to commend the service providers, the staff, for the commitment and flexibility in retaining this level of service in very difficult circumstances. Additional guidance has been circulated to all service providers to ensure that they maintain regular contact with the service users that are not attending the locations. And there's two other pieces. I don't see a clock, so I'm, can I, yeah. you'll tell me when to stop. Briefly, I have yes. no doubt you will. Um, there was two other pieces, and I think this is an important piece. A care needs assessment commitment in 2021. So 180 thousand in funding for the rollout of carers needs assessment as part of the single assessment tool project has been secured um, from the dormant accounts fund um, the the cna has been done and due to begin was due to begin in 2021 but is starting in 2021 and it is starting in ch02 um, in order to provide a mechanism to better access family carers needs with a view to linking them into relevant services and support and that's really really welcome because we do know that the the tool that has been used as the needs for how carers can actually access support Thank is you, not Minister. very clear to them uh, and finally um, respite hours 27,000 hours of emergency respite through family carers ireland in 2021 to ensure that immediate care needs of care recipients are met in an event that a carer is no longer able to continue uh, their role and, and finally, you, I Evans. think that tomorrow, in relation to prime time, Chair, um, my understanding is that there are statements tomorrow afternoon. I don't have the full facts to answer all the questions, but I will be coming before the House, um, and perhaps with Minister Donnelly, to answer questions on everything there. Thank you, Minister Abbott. I now call on